<laughs> your face looks like you're tired. <laughs> well, after a week and a half of being at Louisville, it seems like, well, I decided, hey, why not go lower? <laughs> I was inspired by Louisville. So. Oh boy, it just doesn't stop. So with that being said, what did you talk him into? I didn't talk him into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he said his steer tires were chopping and it's your kingpins. And, well, I mean, we got to change kingpins, so we might as well change the axle. That's right. Uh, yeah, he my. He wants a cool 386 like I had once. <laughs> sure, he does. All right, well, let's see what you boys can do. We should probably measure it now and measure it when we're done, huh? What do you think? Yeah, probably. We'll we'll uh we'll take a before and after. Let's do this. This mess today, well, he's doing that. Yep. We'll yeah, keep... we have a mess in this whole shop from building a dump truck. We'll keep him under adult supervision. <laughs> You're gonna keep Brent under adult supervision? Yeah. I think he's got this. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is what the guys are gonna put in the truck today. Just one of them. Not well, I hope just one. He's going to look funny. We have one for a future product project. Yeah, right here is a sneak peek of it. Or for those of you who have commented on it in the background already. So this is what, a five inch drop axle? Correct. What's in there now? Leave it. A not far enough drop axle. <laughs> three, 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 and a half. three? Three, three and a half. Something Which like comes standard. But you're going to want to make sure you've got a wide base because you've got your two uh wedges for your kingpins that's kind of the roundabout way of how you tell you have a wide base front axle is these two normally you just have one but most of the newer trucks come with wide base front axles so uh, a lot of the, the aerodynamic trucks already have that so all we have to do really is change the, the that must axle be the part being, number we don't have to we don't have to change uh, tie rod ends and all that other crap. Spindles, them are all different. So we have what we need here. We're just going to... We hope we have what we need here. throw that in there. <laughs> we don't. We're going to have some serious problems. Yes, we are. You said you have U-bolts here, right? I have a spare truck if this doesn't work. That is true. The reason we're saying that is because Brent may or may not be leaving in a couple of days and he needs to get it aligned and everything else in between day and a half why not <laughs> dispatch booked him a little tight we've done a lot of dumber stuff <laughs> and we will continue to do dumber stuff yeah but do you have u-bolts here for real sure i got you... another air ride kit yeah. okay all right get after it All right, so we have everything, everything on jack stands. You're going to want to put them somewhere solid. You don't want the truck falling on you because we've got to take all this out. So this has one of our air rides on it. Uh, we need to unbolt all this, which is fairly, fairly familiar for me. And uh, you're going to have to take these off. Brakes. Drop your king pins out. We gotta back the brakes off. Just kinda assemble this, or disassemble it rather, piece by piece. But uh, I think the tie rods are gonna be the fun part. So we're just gonna get after it, I guess. But that here we are. Like this you is where. Guys problem, not a meat yeah, problem. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna wanna find yourself a, a, a nice gentleman to do the dirty work for you. Well, it's because it's his truck. He's yeah, gonna, well. So anywho, we, uh, we do have it this far. Get the wheels off, get, get everything up on jacks, like I said. Just, you want everything out of the way so we can, so we can work. So, um, and then also you're gonna, these U-bolts these are about a year and a half old, a year old. I don't, I don't remember when we air-rided it. It's gotta be almost two years now. 
So right. you're going to want to not reuse those. You're going to want to get new ones. So what we're going to do is we have some new ones here. We're going to give to him, and then he wants a few spares. So he's just going to take these as spares. That'll work. But uh, we'll pull everything apart, inspect it, make sure nothing's loose, nothing's bad. So uh, do this right. That's all I'm saying. And we got new, new king pins to put in, so everything should be new. Steer tires, what about your steer tires? Those are shot, by the way. Oh, well, yeah, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> yes, see, so you, you're putting some on? Yeah, I'm going to okay. have to get some. All right. That's the whole reason we could tell the king pins are bad, the tires were going, and, well, you can generally jack it up and tell if a king pin is bad. So even if they're not bad, we're doing cool things, so it doesn't matter. And as soon as we're done with this, it's going to the alignment shop. Yes. Is the plan. Yes. So anybody that wants to tackle this, make sure you get it to the alignment shop after that. Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. Let's get after it. All right. effects oh so I was gonna videotape them taking the axle out but well that's okay I guess we missed that step but it's out She's off. hope them jack stands hold that front end of that truck up or you're gonna be buying oh. an oil pan you know what they say <laughs> If it holds it up, if it, it, I guess it'll hold it up, but if it don't, it don't. It'll be fine. Chad's famous last words. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. The worst that could happen. Yeah. The Mark Harbor Freight Jack stands. Harbor Maybe Freight has good right. stuff. Charlie, if you're watching this, um, we had some other ones to use, but I don't know where they went. If you know, let us know. Maybe in the pancake pile. Yeah. There are 20... 20 ton jack stands. This ain't no 40,000 pound. Okay, sure. Anyways, axle's out. Time to roll the other one under, or what's next? Make a sandwich. It's lunchtime. It is lunchtime. It is lunchtime. We gotta stay properly nutritioned. Oh! <laughs> Hats off to the fella that and I seized everything. <laughs> It all came apart. Yeah, I was, I was very surprised. Yeah. What did we have, like three hours into that maybe? No, like an hour and a half. Or, it yeah, wasn't like long. That. Yeah. Because you didn't get here until... It was after nine. Yeah. And we dicked around until... And it's lunchtime now. So five minutes. Then. Five minutes. It took five minutes. Five minutes. minutes. <laughs> That's all it took was yep. five minutes. Yep. Oh, well. All right, well, All right. let's have a sandwich and let's get back yeah. at it, I guess, huh? Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to drop that down? Now it's just the toe breaker 5,000 instead of the shin breaker right here. So, somehow this has got to get back under there and I don't, I just ate lunch. <laughs> I can't bend over. Well, ram it in. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs>
I had to. I wanted to say. <laughs> well, if it's not going to go in, if you just keep staring at it. Might. <laughs> Is there a front or a back? I don't know. You're the one. That, <laughs> you're the truck builder. Didn't you just build this big fancy truck and all this other stuff? I think we've got to turn it around. Honestly. Yeah, we do. Now that you said that, uh, uh, with the way the bolts bolt out, so those go forward. I'll turn it. There you go. Okay, bye. Harder, not harder. Okay, bye. Alright, I got it turned around. <laughs> Yeah, because these bolts should be the inside is what you're thinking, right? No, these right here. Oh. The way the pins go on, or these uh, these wedge pins. Yeah. These this washers go on this side, so the pins only go can go in one way, and they oh. lock in place. Okay. Well, at least you didn't get it under there and then realize yeah. it. I'm pretty sure. That's what I tried to tell you guys, but the stamping number's different. So we'll look on the invoice. But if you Google it, that's the one you're gonna get. Probably, right? Yeah. Squirrel, let's put it under there. We can put that in the description. It's squirrel it. You already dropped something off there. Yep, that's the So for all asking, that is the part number. 14262TB105-6. We can get more and we sell them for $6,000. <laughs> Order your own, folks. <laughs> All right. What do I do here? I don't know. We're just sliding in there and then uh, this, yeah. So it's out of the way so you stop stripping on it. Yeah, I think it looks like a new one. Yep. But it's one color. Oh. Look out for the fender. Yep. Good thing Drop he's. Dog. Drop or dog. Well, it's not, I gotta get past this. It's time. not, yeah. What? Nothing, he's fine. I got it. Jump me to. You got adjustable. Too far. <laughs> That's kind of adjustable. <laughs> I don't know how to get out of the way with the camera. It's good for you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Pretty close. Problem is. We uh, we put this side in. We can't put the other side in because the pallet jack's in the way. Oh, We're gonna have to slide it side away a little, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh Jesus! Well, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to tell me you're doing that first. All right. All right, Communication yeah. for any of those who've worked with Chad is always a on, pleasant experience. There you go. <laughs> Careful, you're hooked here. All right, raise it up now. Are you pointing like this? What? Yeah. Here. You always want to put your wedges in. Well, you want me to put the wedge in on this side? Well, I, that's your problem, not my problem. <laughs> this wedge looks a little... D-wedge? What'd you do? You took that side off. It's probably the only thing he's got in stock, don't worry. Didn't have the U-bolts he told us he had. Didn't have the shocks he told us he had. Just... Is it, are you rejecting it because of that? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to get it on film. What you got? A wedge. A wedge. <laughs> Put it in right so you don't break it this time. I'm not saying anything because I know who put it in the last time. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> How did it go in? You want the like that part or the back? Okay. There you go. Want me to try and lift it up some more? Yeah. 
Okay. I'm not lifting it up. Communication. I'll guide my end. Okay. Just keep do you, on. Do you want me to come jack it up? See, no, so, so you can guide your end. Okay. You can multitask. Try to anyway. Hold on now. I gotta find the hole. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brent had his in the hole and it's gone. Not anymore. Definitely not. <laughs> I don't think you're high enough. I'm not. Well, high you enough. told him to hold on. <laughs> hold yeah. on. Flag's too far. There we go. That felt like a positive note. Do you want it up? Yeah. Yeah. Mine's in. Mine is not. All right, hold on. Now the fun part. You have to go forward. I can tell. That's your fine. holes are, your stars are not aligned. Let it down. How much can you? No way. Can you let it down? Because okay. I'm trying to do it with one hand and I don't reach. Do you need to double check yours over there? No, I heard it. It was a good herd. I don't think you're in. Uh -uh. I'm in. I'm Just not yeah, sucked pressing, up. Yeah, it's not pressing on that side yet. But well, it's in there. I well, believe it is anyway. It's touching on the back. So. We cannot go any further until we get you bolts. You bolts. Can you get a U bolt in each side at least for now? Yeah. yeah. We're short on U-bolts. Fred, if you're watching, I'm glad your cab over has U-bolts because we forgot to order more. So you have axle, shim, spring, now you're going to want your plate. wedge in there, or your steering wheel. Your truck's going to drive you. You are not going to drive the truck. So that wedge needs to be in there. Four degree wedge is usually what I use. Four degree, then, so axle, four degree, then spring. And make then sure you put your wedge in. in the correct way. <clears throat> the fat part to the back. Yes. Because you, you want your axle to lay back or down a little bit. The whole reason being you want that tie rod to be down in a relaxed state, basically. So when you turn a corner, you know how your steering wheel kind of centers itself back to center? And when you go down the road, your steering wheel stays straight? That's that's because of that wedge. If you take that wedge out, your steering is gonna wander horribly. That wedge needs to be in there. Now, there are some exceptions if you run like the new 389s with a low, low, rear suspension, low, low air leaf, where your hangers are raised up on a frame, then you can get away without that. But any other suspension, you really need them wedges in there. So, yeah. and that's just because of the, the way the truck is. You know, if it's leaning like this, you want your axle tipped back a little bit, especially if it's got a rake to it. And all my air ride trucks all have rakes to them. They're lower in the front than they are in the back. That's just the way it goes, so. Hmm. Yeah. That wedge will make the drivability of the truck way better. Some guys leave them out. They say they're going to get the truck lower and this and that. They, that's not the case. Hmm. So Come. there's all sorts of science, scientific stuff to air rides and the, the, the truck's driving well. And that's that's one major key. Come. Did you lose? What? Are, do you have the kitchen sink in there? You just. Took a brake chamber out, a chair. I don't forget that too. And that toolbox. He doesn't keep anything at home. He's got it all in the truck with him. A starter? That's a starter? Yeah. No wonder why you're oh, no wonder why you're overweight. <laughs> ay ay ay. No.
a washer on each side of the nut or, or, or to one yeah. the one side of the nut or, I mean no just just one why do they send you with four washers because in case you do that in case you lose one <laughs> no what happens is is they cut the threads on these yeah and with, because of your wedge, sometimes you need another washer on the front side because it's narrower, you see? Oh. On the front side. Otherwise, it's just one washer? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Cool. I just want to tighten this so if this jack settles, it doesn't fall off there because... If you ever done one of these, it can be really fun to align the centering pins back up again. And plus, I need something to do while he digs through his shopping center of parts. <laughs> that, I don't know how he finds anything in there. He's going to have it all out so, shortly, so he'll rearrange. Did you order them. more U-bolts? I only ordered two. That's all we needed. Oh, boy. We're going to let him be worried well, we over there. How you doing, Brent? Did you find it yet? Nope. Nope. Well. Yeah. See all that? So the kingpin, if you look at it this way, it kind of leans back a little bit. That's what you want. As I was saying before, that's why that wedge is in there. That makes no sense to me because it's thicker in the back, so it should not lean that way. I'm just going to put that out there. It does not make sense to me what you're saying. If there's more meat in the back, you'd think it would lean this way, not this way. No, because it's underneath of what it's getting bolted to. On the top, yes, you're correct. But it's underneath the spring. See what I mean? It's underneath, so it goes the opposite way. Just hang around me a little bit more, and then you would learn something, I promise you. Don't you think I'm around you enough? I think so, yeah. Don't you think I can get a break at some point in my life and get out of these steel walls? I mean, you might have to go around for parts, so Brett could find his other U-bolt. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't looking good, he says. Well, whoops. What could go wrong? You're holding it, Doug. How is it? Over there. Over there. <laughs> You're holding it, dummy, says. So they're trying to get that oh, bushing okay. out, you know, without Hello. proper tools while taking spam phone calls. Didn't say spam. Oh. You're almost out with the seat going. It's already over the top. Over the top well, I have a fork in my back. Oh. I have a hammer in my head. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Oh, it makes me laugh. You have a fork in your head. Don't worry about the fact that he's getting a hammer swung at him, but you have a fork in your head. <laughs> That's a heat problem, not an e problem. <laughs> Just think, don't you have to do that once more? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's special. <laughs> are the U-bolts right that I ordered? I didn't open the box yet. Oh, where are they? Over here. It's been a quite a few years since I've uh, measured and ordered U-bolts. Let's hope for the best, folks. Well, the good news is the U-bolts are right. The even better news is they can keep working now. Have at her.
I'm not allowed to say, what are you doing? Because Jake picks on me. So I'm going to say, how's it going? Jake who? Jake, if you read the comments in the videos, oh. I, I, he's going to go back and count how many times I say, what are you doing? Well, that's part of the accent. <laughs> he's got the same accent. He comes from the same street. Oh. <laughs> so how's it going out here? Well, I don't know. We're just waiting for parts. We, uh... Got the kingpins in, the axles in, air rides all back in, new shocks. Waiting on new shoes and drums? Yep. Good to do it, do it right. That's right. Kingpins went in okay? Well, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> At least you guys were consistent. <laughs> Actually, I didn't really hear much for swearing or yelling. There was no swearing. No, you guys are both pretty calm. So both sides are back together. Cool. Now that we weighs about five hundred pounds less without all the grease on it. Uh, well, you gotta keep it greased. Yep. That's for sure. So that's that. So it's back together, waiting on shoes and drums. Then we can put the what's going on there, the show bumper or the work bumper? Work bumper. Back <laughs> work bumper. I love how people walk up to Brent and talk to him about the show bumper. It cracks me up. Yeah, you don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, Brent's we, gonna. Uh, we, we, we also, we gotta change the, the fuel filter. It's been about 40,000 miles, you figure? Yeah. About oh, 40, yeah. 000. Good point. So, if you watch back in previous videos over Christmas when we were all at Brent's, and he is the one with the filter full of carboxylates and kind of had a mess coming from Florida in the it's cold bad. weather. It's pretty black, which. It cleared itself out. It took it. Took everything to the trash can. It's hard to see in here. But true story, that is the filter that you've seen in that video around Christmas. Today is April 5th, and he is still running that same filter. Yep. Never did change it. We took it out, we cleaned it out, and put it back in. We don't really even have to change it. But no. You just kind of want to. Well, I'm just saying oil change. Yeah. Yeah, oil change. And I go that. Florida and back and stuff like that, so... Doing one, might as well do the other. That's true. Yep. Get get fresh in there for sure. But get it's kind fresh. of. Are you I picking up? Get fresh. get fresh filters in there. Okay. Fresh, clean ones. Oh, shush it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, kind of cool to see that same filter ran all these miles, even with all the problems he had this winter. It's yeah. it's impressive. So. Yeah. It, like I said, if you didn't see that video, go back and watch it. That was on the Primrose five zero zero seven when we were playing with it out in the field at his place. Not in the field, but I mean, on site, what's in with the filters. So same thing, but now we'll get shoes and drums on here, get the bumper back on. And Brent actually, we seem to do this to him a lot. Yeah, they, they get to leave me again. We're leaving uh, him. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we're gonna ditch him this afternoon. He has to finish putting it back together. Yeah, I but think you could take it from here. Well, I think so. Um, we're gonna pass the channel over to him you were one of them that talked us into doing this I'm, channel i'm well yeah. aware I, I really wasn't gonna be the one on this side of the camera but, <laughs> <laughs> but well, you're doing you a fine now. job yeah but brent will do a closing video and take you around show you what the truck looks like with the new axle in and hopefully give us his opinion on what he thinks once he does it yeah well, i hope it's good i, uh, I, hope I, I don't hope. have any problems <laughs> me too that's gonna suck <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. But then he's going to drop the truck off, get it aligned. Mm -hmm. Like we said, after doing all this stuff, it's best to have it aligned yeah. and gone through. Yeah. New set of shoes up here. New set of shoes. New well, are you? Figuratively and literally. Yeah. yeah. Um, new brakes yeah. and new tires. feel like a brand new truck. God, I hope so. I'm sick of this thing <laughs> shaking me to death. So. <laughs> well, if you just hurry up and get your other one done. Well, you know. I got room about June. Yeah, right. I ask you to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still see, I think that thing's going to be in here yet in June. Uh, maybe beginning of June, but not the end of June. Oh, boy. So, so I guess what he's, or what they're saying is, stay tuned. There might be more of Brent and a fun build coming. Yeah. Yeah. And there might not be. We never know. Yeah. Depends on how the market goes. That's yeah. exactly it. Depends <laughs> yeah. how the trucking world takes yeah. us. That's for sure. But... 
So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and watching them put everything together. It's yeah. kind of a fun change of pace after coming back from Louisville, right. for sure. We really so. didn't explain things like I said we were gonna, but... Well, anyway. do you wanna explain anything? Well, they're really, they, it only goes together one way. Um, but most of the time people take... Not necessarily... The that, hub off. The pin says top and bottom on that, it. Yeah, the <laughs> pin, this pin, yep, yeah, says top and bottom, but that's things we don't, we don't read. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, most people take this off, take this off, so they only have the spindle for, for weight. Not us, we do it the hard way, but we had our forklift, so we just kind of slung it and, and we uh, just gently put it on there. So biggest thing is, is when you slide your, your kingpin in, we did use the, the what do they call it? The non-honing or non- Non-reaming. Yeah. Non-reaming um, bushings. That's all I've ever used. Uh, them go in so much easier. There is a tool that uh, makes it easier. Where you is that box? That, if you don't have that, you can make one. Like you can you make did. one. Oh, Brent made one. So uh, anyways, they're really only made to go together one way. So if something doesn't fit, you got something wrong. But you want to make sure that that kingpin goes straight through without binding or any of that. So um, as far as that, it's pretty self-explanatory. There are videos on YouTube. Uh, mm -hmm. Brent, you said you've been. Yeah, I watched a few of them. Yeah, you've never done it before. Oh, I've first time. done a few, but something I really don't dabble into. So, uh, Do you guys that. have the kingpin box at all? Do you know where it is? Is it on the other side? But that is a good point. It is the non-reamable kingpin set that we ordered, which is a common question when you're ordering parts. Do you have it? This is a stem coal kit. Here's the part number. Okay. K147E. And that goes with the axle that we showed you the part number in earlier. Yes. Yeah, because it is a wide-based front axle. So... Um, like I said, as long as you got all that stuff right, make sure you use new U-bolts. Looks like there's a halo over your head. I don't know what's wrong with You're the camera. But I am an angel. You are not an angel. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> make sure you use new U-bolts uh, for the leaf springs. That's uh, that's a safety thing. It's a liability thing. So if you're going to go ahead and do this, you just, just do it right. Just buy new parts. That's true. So... All right. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. Well, like I said, Brian will finish getting it together. We'll do the final video and be able to see how much lower this 386 is. Just don't forget that when you're pulling into places, though. Yeah, I know. Because I'm sending you to the true test with a six. Yeah, we can't put a shoulder around. Yeah, that one's not that bad. No, it's actually pretty easy. So, all right. Sounds good. Okay, so we're gonna pull that filter out. I know Lisa would be mad if I didn't videotape me taking this filter out. Uh, and take a look at it, you know, 40,000 miles. So here we go.
No, it's black, it's dirty, it is what it is. But nothing built up like it was. Everything run through smooth. And it probably didn't really have to change it, but it's time to change oil, so we change everything. So we don't have any problems out on the road. So multiple fuel stops at random places out across the country and other stuff. There's some pretty nasty crap in there, so time to change it. Hi right, guys, just a quick little tip I got. I don't know, a lot of you might know it, might not, I don't know. For people that don't know it, it can help you get out of a little bit of a jam. Um, when you are charging your, I don't know how to hold that, when you're charging your fuel filters and this and that, if something happens and you're out on the road and you can't get them to work, uh, say you're at an angle, it's happened to me, um, where we were just at a slight angle, it would not pull and we could not get the fuel to come up on the coming. So came up with a little idea. Um, if you have a spray nozzle or air nozzle in your truck, I happen to have a, a quarter inch piece of gas line. And we took that and went down to the fuel tank on the back of your, your top of your fuel tank, your breather. And that's there to let pressure in, out. But you can also charge your tank if you have the, the air hose and you can put a little bit of pressure on the, the tank and it'll help it push the fuel up to the filter. It'll give it just that enough to get it to run through. Uh, save my butt a few times. I just did it. I wish I would have videotaped it when I did it here because uh, it, it works great. You don't have to sit and cycle and cycle and cycle and cycle try to get the fuel to go up so just a little trick um yeah i just uh hooked it to the airline here just with a just a little air gun and then uh make sure your tanks are all closed and then blew some air into it and just pushes the fuel up and through the pump and primes the system just a little tip i know chad's always the one giving tips and stuff on here but i'm doing it right now so Hey, why, why the hell not share it with everybody, so. Well, there it is, all done. Got it done just in time. I gotta head out and go take it to the alignment shop. But it was, wasn't that bad. Um, a little hard work, a lot of help from Chad and Lisa. And <clears throat> we got it all done in a day and a half. Um, I have, we didn't take any pictures beforehand because we weren't thinking about it. We measured it, so it was seven and a half inches or seven and three quarter inches before we put the uh, lowered axle in and now it's at five and a half. So gained a little bit. I'm guessing it will break in a little bit here and there. Um, maybe going down the road once I start moving it, it'll go down about another maybe quarter inch, half inch or something like that. But here it is, all done for the day. Um, Thanks again to Chad and Lisa for letting me come in and use the shop. All the other tools and uh, helping me out through the whole process. Um, hope everybody enjoyed it and thank you. Bye.